Welcome to University Drive, your pathway to the transformational work of University of the Bahamas. Our goal is to build a better Bahamas by shaping tomorrow's leaders today, finding solutions to challenges, and forging new opportunities for growth. University Drive, where faculty, staff, students, and alumni travel the road of progress together with you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to University Drive. I'm your host, Tamika Lundy. Thank you so much for joining us for season 11 of the show. Thanks for being a part of our journey. In this episode, we're diving into the remarkable journey of a team of students from University of the Bahamas who defied the odds and emerged victorious at the prestigious Live AI Hackathon 2024 held at Harvard University. Their story is not just about winning awards, but it's about resilience, it's about innovation, and the harvest that has grown from the seeds of collaboration. You'll want to stay with us for the duration of the show as we unravel the inspiring tale behind CoralCoin, a revolutionary fintech application, and these bright minds behind it. We have way more than the number of guests than we normally have, and for good reason. Our champions are Makari Smith, Jessica Simonet, Tawana Livingston, and Matthew Smith, and they have a story to tell. Also joining us is the Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Marlo Murphy-Brennan. Welcome all. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Let's start at the very beginning. What is the Live AI Hackathon? So that our listeners can have an appreciation for what you were involved in. So I am Jessica, and the Live AI Hackathon is a competition where students had to travel to either Harvard University or Duke University to design, develop, and demo an application in 24 hours under either or all three themes of artificial intelligence, Web3 blockchain technology and or financial technology, which were demoed on site on March 24th at both campuses. However, there was also an online component where students that weren't able to attend at the campus could still participate. And judging for that happened on April 7th. Wow, I am absolutely in awe. How did you prepare for what sounds like was such a daunting experience and challenge? How did you all prepare for this? Yes, Makari speaking, it is definitely a daunting thing to think about um, just leading up to it. We only learned about the opportunity a few days prior to us traveling. Um, so I'd say that one of the ways that we prepared was just getting to know each other. We might have known each other and passing around campus, but we had never collaborated together in this way. And so we just kind of started working on our teamwork skills, learning where each other's strengths and weaknesses is, and just building off of that. Okay, all of you are business majors, correct? So let's hear from each person. Tell me a, a bit about your background. What's your major in business? Um, because I would imagine you all have to learn a little bit about each other before you all learn how to work together as a, an optimal team, right? Yes, ma'am. So I can speak first. My name is Makari Smith. I am a finance major. I am in my third year here at the University of the Bahamas. And yeah, I'm just really excited to have this opportunity. Well, hi, I'll, get, I'll go next. My name is Solana Lovingston. I'm in my senior year at the University of Bahamas studying economics. And it, it was a great experience. Hi, my name is Matthew Williams. I'm also a senior at the University of the Bahamas studying computer information systems. And I am Jessica Simonet. I am a CIS major as well with a minor in marketing, and I am in my junior year at the University of the Bahamas. All right, very good. I would imagine in preparation mode, that conversation or those conversations with the faculty member or the dean 
um, were very important, right? So Dean Murphy Brennan, how did you help to provide the support that was necessary for this intrepid group of, of students? Okay, good morning again. Certainly, it was um, a fast-moving um, experience from start to finish. Uh, we had literally less than a week to put a team together to go to, to travel to Harvard University to participate in the AI Hackathon. And so we did what we would normally do in business. Um, faculty, we, we, we collaborated. Um, we Obviously, we looked at the at, at our students from across economics, banking, finance, CIS, to identify the best student and of the best students to be a part of, of the of the hackathon experience. And that was an extremely difficult um, thing to do in such a short time because we had so many wonderful, capable students. Um, so shortlisting four students to go on this experience. I can't even begin to tell you how difficult that was, um, but we allowed the data to speak. And so the students that you you have on the show today, these re they represent the very best of our business students. And we're proud of all of them because literally we could have taken any four combination because we had so many outstanding students to choose from. The competition was extremely um, tough. We interviewed uh, a short list of students, the four students, Jessica, Tawana, Makari, Matthew. They were just so up for the challenge. And, you know, they were willing at short notice to be a part of this team. And they chronicled their journey from almost from the time they were selected to getting onto that flight and, and traveling to, to Boston. I can't tell you how proud we are of them. They did so well. Um, personally, they did well, and they represented the University of the Bahamas and the Bahamas. They represented us all so well. Students, you've been affirmed as the creme de la creme of the, the, the College of Business. So, And that's coming from the dean of the college. So uh, that's a huge, that's a huge deal, a huge deal. Dean Murphy Brennan, were, was there anything that faculty wanted to ensure from the outset of this? Certainly, um, as uh, given the focus of the hackathon, artificial intelligence, we wanted to make sure that we had the students um, from key disciplines. We definitely knew that we needed to have someone who was strong with banking and finance who understood in that space. And of the team, the composition, because it's a team of four, we wanted to make sure that we had um, students with coding knowledge. And so Jessica and Matthew represented that aspect of it. And then just broadly, the economics and finance, we wanted to make sure that we had a, a strong economic student and that's where Tijuana um, came in. And so they all played a role. And what was interesting is the fact that these students, Tawana, Jessica, Makari, Matthew, they're all leaders in their own right. And so our concern or a consideration had to be, okay, if we're sending a, a, a team of four leaders, how will they manage? You know, because being a part of a team, you're not always going to be the person um, leading in every instance. But they handled it so beautifully. They, 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 they work together seamlessly. Um, you know, when they tell you about their experience, the four students, when they came to my office after they returned from, from Boston and they gave me the chronicle of, of their experience, the lows, and there were many of them and their perseverance in the middle of all of that. It, 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 this was really, it was really a dream team. It really was a dream team. And against all odds, against people underestimating and against them going against some of the, you know, the notable universities in, in North America, they prevailed because they believed in themselves and we instilled in them that they could win. They, they could go anywhere in the world and be successful. Just have the confidence to believe that you could do that. And, and they, they performed exceptionally well.
they did what they were trained to do. We're so proud. That is so wonderful to hear. You know, one of the best things about greatness, and um, I understand that one of the mantras at UB is that it's where greatness grows. One of the best things about greatness is when it emerges from an individual or a team that has been underestimated. And um, we're going to get into that. But just so our listeners could have an appreciation for the wins and the honors and the prestige that this team has brought back, not only for University of the Bahamas, but for the Bahamas, let's go down the list of win of gains, wins, honors, and awards, and and prizes that this student team has clinched. They got the Live AI, AI Harvard Financial Technology win, the Live AI Global Product Design Honorable Mention win, the Live AI Global Financial Technology winner, the Live AI Global Blockchain Web three winner, um, also Best International Product from Hub North America, popular vote, I Love Democracy winner. Wow. Um, let's just let that resonate and sit right there. And let's talk about how do you feel, each of the four of you, how do you feel earning such a fantastic and huge um, package of honors, not only for yourselves, but for your country? I, Tawana here, it is a very humbling and gratifying moment for us all, my dogs included, and the University of the Bahamas and even the Bahamas, to see, as some people call them little Bahamas, well, we made it big Bahamas. To go to Harvard amongst all the other participants, the Duke campus, the global event, and those at Harvard, it was just amazing when she called our name to say that we won. That that was breathtaking. That was a moment that was live in me forever. Yes, definitely. I think like when we were sitting there and we were just like, okay, well, if nothing else comes out of it, at least we're done and we did this and, you know, um, but like when we were sitting there and they like called our name, we kind of just all looked at each other in shock and we were just like, wow, like we did this, like we were competing about um, among so many other intelligent students and we were able to just have this opportunity. And it definitely does feel amazing, even going to school and people just saying congratulations and asking about the experience and people getting interested in maybe doing hackathons or doing more stuff in computer science. It was, it's definitely awesome to see the residual effects of this, yeah. So Jessica, you know, we were, we still are ecstatic because like, Dean Murphy Brennan mentioned there were so many challenges that we faced even up to like the last three minutes of us <laughs> trying to upload our video. We had some technical difficulties. So during this time, it was like significantly stressful because for the entire 24 hours, we, we kind of had to like sleep in shifts. So we had to determine who was going to do what, who was going to be working on what, who was going to sleep while well, we couldn't necessarily sleep but who's gonna meditate at this time and work at this time and overall it was just like a lot of small things that kind of added up all together to make the experience more challenging so when we sat in the room and they were announcing who was the top winner and we saw them write the name of our app CoralCon on the board we were overwhelmed with joy because we were so stressed that now we did not think that we were going to win. And it was like, wow, you know, we underestimated ourselves this entire time. This is Matthew Lou speaking. So following up on what my colleagues said, I definitely think it was a story of perseverance and victory, but not one that we would have predicted. I even remember us, you know, communicating with each other right before we went to present. And we were saying, like, we didn't pray together, but we prayed individually. And I think that's so significant because of the fact that, speaking for myself, I had never traveled out of the country before. So that was my first time out of the country, as well as representing the country internationally face-to-face. -face. So it was a lot going on for me personally, even aside from the other stuff that would have occurred, you know, uh, with us as a group. So I think it shows that not only that we was placed there by our excellent team, 
But we also had God on our side throughout the process. And I think that dictated to why the group clicked so well, because there wasn't a specific group leader, but we all were leaders when called to be. And I think it goes to show that what God has for you will always be. Oh, that is so heartwarming to hear. Thank you all for your responses. You know, I can attest to how daunting it is to be a part of a hackathon type experience. I was a part of a mediathon experience. Y'all had 24 hours, we had 48. And there's nothing that could compare to the sweaty palms, the beads of perspiration on your brow, the pit in the, the gnawing pit in your stomach when you have to come up with something that you could be proud of within a specified time frame that calls for you to, to, to draw on your, your expertise and your knowledge, plus work with a bunch of folks. So what are the challenges that you encountered where looking back now, you can actually laugh about it, but at the time, it- um, To one and a half, well, I can say that although we were a bit stressed, we always made time to laugh or to relieve the stress. So during the competition, um, closer to like 12 a.m., we offered to have a dance party to build our energy and momentum up so that we could keep going because everyone was getting tired. Um, we were all trying to finish our tasks and it was a lot. So we just had a moment where we broke down, like literally break down dancing um, to get our energies up. And like um, my colleagues mentioned earlier with the technical difficulties, it's really strange that the computer were working excellent for the entire um, 23 hours. And in the final moment, it decided to act up. So <laughs> I don't know what that was, but we persevered. So I'm grateful for that. Yes, just to elaborate on what Tawana said, like we were there and we were trying to submit our project before the 12 p.m. deadline. And so there's a process that you have to go through where you have to fill out a bunch of information regarding your um, application and just upload a video and upload your product. Make sure that everything is um, situated as it's supposed to be. And so it's like 11.56, 11.57, and we're about to click submit. And the computer just, it shuts off completely. It hadn't done that the entire time and it shuts off. And we're like, oh my goodness. And we were able to get it to boot up again right before the deadline and submit our project. But that was definitely a moment where we were just like, oh my goodness, like we don't know if we're going to get this in in time. And by the grace of God, it was able to be submitted. Hi, this is Matthew speaking. I think aside from the technical difficulties, that the blue screen was extravagant, especially due to the fact that I believe my computer could have handled, could have handled what was occurring. But we also was not prepared for the fact that we wouldn't be really be able to sleep, but instead we would have to meditate. And just, you know, sort of focus because of the fact that we were on the campus competing for 24 hours. And I think we also did not consider uh, that we would not be able to bed. Because, you know, as Bahamians, we used to, like, when the sun rises, we go to bed. But there was no facility <laughs> to accommodate that. <laughs> New experiences. <laughs> <laughs> so it definitely was a cultural shock for me, I should say. All right. I, I'm, <laughs> liking the, I'm liking the fact of, how courageous and forthcoming you are in sharing that information. <laughs> so break dancing at midnight and not being able to, to, to bathe like you wanted to, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I was going to say another challenge we had was trying to collaborate simultaneously because the platform that we were using, it, it didn't allow, it didn't have a feature where we could all work on it at once. So it's like we had to take turns with it. And then we also had to juggle completing the application, making sure that it, it would demo successfully and also try to complete the scavenger hunt that was being done. And with the scavenger hunt, we had to bring a lot of the other teammates in because it, it wasn't specific to just our team. We had to, some of the scavenger hunt challenges, we had to, you network with some of the persons from the other teams so that we could win the award for it and essentially it was difficult because some persons they were busy working on their app we were trying to work on our app and we we're trying to like juggle working on this 
while also being able to complete the work that we need to do. And we can't work at the speed we need to work at because we can't work all at once. Yeah, I would also like to butt in. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that it was so cold. Like, I think sometimes as Bahamians, we take for granted the temperature that we like live in. But like, I woke up some mornings when we were there and I checked my phone and it's like, it's zero degrees Celsius outside. It's negative one degrees Celsius outside. Like it's freezing cold outside. So I think that was another thing that we had to adjust um, ourselves for, especially during the competition, because we wouldn't be in the comfort of our hotel. We wouldn't be in the comfort of like a, a proper home. And so it was definitely something to adjust to. So it sounds like everything combined to ensure that you were always on your toes and thinking on your feet. This is wonderful. So we've come to the point for our first break of the show. You're listening to University Drive. We'll have more about the chronicles of this winning team of UB students that brought home multiple wins for the Bahamas after this break. NASA, get ready. UB Fit, Fun Run War, Bike Skate Push Race Weekend is coming April 19th to the 21st. Complete your 5K, 10K, or 15K virtually. Or join the big race at the Oaksfield Campus on Saturday, April 20th at 6 a.m. Fun's Race will support UB's annual fund. Form a team and register at Chapter 1 Bookstore or online at ubfit.ub.edu.bs. Thanks to our title sponsor, Doctors Hospital Health System. Gold sponsors, Island Luck, Commonwealth Bank, and Fidelity. Bank. Bronze sponsors, Shell Western Supply and Trading Limited at BPL. Additional sponsors include Alive Red, Lano, Deloitte, J.S. Johnson, Family Guardian, BWA, Commonwealth Beauty Limited, Nassau Agency, Campbell Shipping, Bahamas First, Lombard ODA, Nautilus, Wendy's, Popeyes, Marco, Bahamas Hospitals Authority, Thompson Trading, Walking Clinic, and Public Workers Cooperative. Join us at UB Fit 2024 as University of the Bahamas celebrates its 50th Golden Jubilee. Register today for UB Fit 2024 Big Race Saturday, April 20th. For four Two four eight 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 seven for more info. Welcome back to University Drive. We're talking to a team of students from the University of the Bahamas and Dean Marlo Murphy Brainin. The team has brought back several wins for the country for their creation of a fintech app, and they had a very daunting experience at the Live AI Hackathon held at Harvard University. Um, Dean Murphy Brennan, while uh, they brought back major wins, it was not easy. And I'm sure that once they got back to the country, they filled you in on everything. What were some of the things that they expressed to you that helped you to gain more admiration for the wins that they'd achieved? Um, Tamika, I have to say that the students before you, these are some amazing students. Just we were in a chat, uh, a WhatsApp group um, throughout the entire experience. The, um, the persons who were, um, you know, a part of putting the team together. And so as the students moved through the experience, they would post bits and pieces of information, but but none of the information in its entirety. They, the, um, Matthew, Tawana, Jessica, Macari, they decided that they wanted to not tell us that they had won until they got back to the Bahamas. And so when they showed up to my office, they took me on a journey of, it was a roller coaster ride of challenges and, oh my God, did that really happen? So when they walked in the office, they, they started to tell me about the fact that minutes before the technology failed, when they showed up on Harvard University campus, they thought that they would have some place to sleep. There was no bed. They were in the lab continuously. They didn't have a bathroom to, you know, freshen up the way that you would. They had to go to the public bathrooms early in the morning and take turns to try and clean up themselves as much as possible. Um, they told me about students there underestimating them, um, thinking, oh, um, you know, in terms of discussing, well, what are you doing? What are we doing? One student said to them, oh, it, it's no big deal. We could tell you because it's not going to make a difference anyhow. Not expecting that this team from the this country, the Bahamas, I mean, underestimating a country where small in size, but have tremendous people and tremendous potential. I remember saying to the, the team, you know, 
we have the golden girls, the golden knights, you go and you do the same thing. But, you know, in that moment, the challenges and the the environment could have caused our students to, to doubt themselves. But this group of students, Jessica Macari, Tawana, Matthew, they believed against all odds in the face of all of the, of the, the challenges coming at them. So when they took me through this journey of negative experiences, I'm like, oh my God. And, and so being polite, I didn't want to, when they went silent in the WhatsApp group, I said, well, I guess they didn't win. And so um, I said, well, anyway, when they come, I'm gonna encourage them as much, as much as possible. So after telling me about everything that went wrong, the students then proceeded to tell me, but nonetheless, we won in one of the key, uh, one of the three segments, and we won the overall award. Because at that point, the, the, the live component of the competition hadn't happened yet. That was scheduled to happen on April 7th. So of the three major categories, they won one of the, the key awards. They won the Best Fin Application Award, and then they won the overall award for the March competition. And then, as you'd said earlier, on, on the April 7th, they won like so many awards. It's, it's, it's difficult to remember all of them. But this group of students, they overcame such challenges, weather, living conditions, um, just things that they didn't know because they'd not been on a hackathon experience before. And they just, they just shine in the middle of all of that. But and Matthew said it, Matthew said that they prayed individually. We were praying from start to finish as we were selecting this team, we were praying, but prayers combined with letting the data speak. We we didn't, we didn't try to say, well, let me just pick the favorite student um, in this particular class. We looked at the data. So the students before you, these are top students and they have the technical abilities. They, they they develop the skills in their various disciplines as they study at UB that allowed them to shine in this moment. So everything came together beautifully. That's amazing, that's amazing. So let's take that a step further. How do you envision this experience and these kinds of experiences really impacting UB students' ability to complete on a global level? UB, as you know, Tamika, UB is on a journey toward accreditation, um, accreditation internationally. The accreditation, to my mind, is a formality because UB from its inception as the College of the Bahamas has been producing exceptional students who are impacting not just um, the local community, but but impacting and, and competing and performing on a global stage with excellence. And so the hackathon experience was a moment in time for our students to shine, but it reflects what's happening on our campus in the business program, but what is being mirrored in different colleges um, on UB's campus every day faculty showing up to, to pour into students and to give the best of themselves, students showing up, sponges absorbing and wanting to be excellent and, and, and achieving it, achieving it every day. The, the victories here is, is a reflection of um, what happens, whether the student is in marketing and management and accounting and finance and economics, Across all of our business programs, we have students who are making us proud in this way and making positive differences in the local community. If you look in um, organizations across the Bahamas, organizations that are excelling and making a difference, I can assure you that there are UB graduates that's leading that process. So Tawana, Jessica, Matthew, Makari, they're, 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 they're showing up to be an example of what our students are doing every day. And I, I anticipate that we will continue to see, to see their performance, not just within the borders of the Bahamas, but regionally and globally. That, that, that is that we're here to stay. Student champions, do you agree? Prepared to operate at an international level through these 
kinds of experiences? Yes, ma'am. This is Makari speaking. I absolutely agree. I think sometimes that people, they take for granted the fact that we are well-educated people, that we're very smart, even though that we, even though we come from a smaller nation, I think that they, they just take for granted that big things can come from small places. <clears throat> and it was just such a pleasure to work with my teammates to see how bright and see where their skills just light up in different areas. I think sometimes the University of the Bahamas, especially among students and people my age, is looked down upon a lot. And I think that we should get out of the habit of doing that. Like, there's so many opportunities that come from going to the University of the Bahamas. I was just telling my friend the other day that like, if I didn't go to UB and I went off to school, I don't think I would have been granted as many opportunities to excel and to flourish and to be poured into because some of the other schools, there's so many students, there are like 40,000, 50,000 students there. And you just, you don't have the opportunity to shine as you would like to, especially as international students. And so- yeah, I think that we should really step up and be proud of our nation and proud of our people and who we are. Wow, what you said is really a testament and an ode to the excellence and um, the quality that's being fostered at UB. Um, any other contributions on that note? I think to add to what Makari said, this is Jessica speaking. We sometimes, too, even take ourselves for granted. Like, we take what we're learning and say, okay, maybe it's not sufficient for us to be able to apply it on an international level until we national level and we realize, wow, UB has prepared us for this. You know, it's prepared us to be able to adapt, to be able to put all of the technical ability, all of the theory, everything we've learned into practical and really use our expertise, what we've learned in school to be able to succeed. And so, you know, this experience has taught me that UB is doing a great job at preparing us to perform on a global standard. And I don't think we should look at it as just, okay, it's just UB. UB is a great university and it 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 shows where our lecturers, our deans, they put a lot of effort into making quality students. And I think that that's something that's that's really valuable. When I started the show, I referenced the fact that this whole experience was also a collaboration. Uh, Dean Murphy Brennan, perhaps you can tell us more about the connection of the Central Bank of the Bahamas to this. I, I want to say that the Central Bank was pivotal in, in all of this, actually. Um, the Central Bank... Led, led by um, Mr. Roll, John Roll, as the governor. Um, also, Kevin Demerit, one of our adjunct faculty, who is also um, a key person at the Central Bank. Um, the, the, the opportunity came to UB via the Central Bank. The Central Bank had made the connections um, with the coordinators of the AI Hackathon, and so the central bank reached out um, to UB to literally a week before this event was scheduled to happen to say, can you pull a team together um, to participate in the AI hackathon at Harvard University in Boston, Massachusetts? And um, it, it was a seamless relationship, a seamless process um, we we worked hand in glove. I can't thank the central bank enough um, for making the connection, funding the students trip, the entire trip, the central bank paid for all of that. Um, and, you know, it, it was an amazing collaboration with one entity um, and another um, for the sake of believing in our students and knowing that our students could go globally and compete. Um, so the central bank, yes, certainly, um, this would not have been possible if the, the opportunity were not presented by the central bank and us rising to the occasion, all, everyone, everyone played a role from the vice president for academic affairs, Dr. Maria Woodside Oriaki, the chair of the School of Business, Mr. Daniel Thompson, the head of department, Mrs. Dale McCarty, um, the head of department for CIS, 
sorry, Shaker Eid and the head of the Department for Banking, Economics and Finance, Tail McCarty, or everybody showed up in a short bit of time. And you can imagine with all of these busy schedules, these people leading very busy lives, everybody came recognizing that this was a moment for us to, to shine and project the best of the University of the Bahamas and the Bahamas. And it, it was a seamless process from start to finish. I, I really can't say enough about the Central Bank and the entire team, the UB team, who poured into um, the students and also making the selection of these young people who you see in front of you, Tawana, Jessica, Macari, and Matthew, to make this happen. Okay, so let's remove the mystique now. Coral Coin, the app, what exactly is it? So we made Coral Coin with the theme of uniting the world one transaction at a time. And it's a digital money transfer service that allows clients to easily transfer funds to and receive funds from others. others. As well as um, it has a donate feature that allows persons to donate seamlessly to anyone in the, in the world. So the idea behind it is that we kind of wanted to make it a global Apple Pay. But we also wanted to incorporate that donate feature. And here's why we're all familiar with the hurricane that happened in 2019, Dorian, you know, um, the Bahamas, namely Abaco, experienced significant damage from that Category 5 hurricane. When it basically hovered over Abaco for about 48 hours, you know, so consequently, that island suffered catastrophic damage, you know, having more than 75% of its homes destroyed during that storm. You know, so as a result, many of the surviving Bahamians, they became displaced, not having sufficient resources to sustain themselves. Um, also, many banking institutions were rendered non-functional, which made it even more difficult for survivors to obtain funds to support their families um, or receive money from family members that were on other islands. You know, so because of this, we thought it was necessary for a digital money transfer service app to be developed, you know, to assist locals and send in funds to support uh, the island being rebuilt and the persons who live on the island. So Coral Coin is developed as an extension to the Bahamian Sand Dollar app, which makes it easier for Bahamians to transfer funds locally. So Coral Coin's intent, we wanted to make that process even easier by um, incorporating a, a very friendly user interface and as well as like i had said the uh, incorporating the donate feature but we we wanted to improve it so that it's you can't you don't only do this locally you do this on a global scale as well so it's a international di digital money transfer service and that was that's essentially the idea of coral coin <laughs> Okay, so was it an easy thing for the group to decide on the exact app that you wanted to give birth to and the name of it? Um, to one I have, not at all. I think it took us about probably two hours or so trying to come up with the name and then later the slogan. But before um, the day of the competition, we were brainstorm. We went into, I believe, my yeah, my room that night, and we brainstormed what exactly was our plan for the following day. What um direction do we think that we're gonna head into? So we came into that competition not so much prepared. Um, during the competition, we just combined our minds together and made made something shaky. Obviously, we made something shaky, but um, all in all, it was a process that we were not really prepared for, but ultimately we succeeded. Thing is that we worked very well together. So many persons, um, they had different tasks. And seeing as though we cannot work on the app itself at all at the same time, so we had to do it in shifts. So that was a challenge. And we also had, like if someone was working on the app, another person can be, researching and working on the presentation for the PowerPoint, um, finding about information or um, um, doing the back end of the app. So ultimately it was totally a group effort. 
you are in the realm of 21st century skills that are needed for any successful professional, the realm of learning how to work as part of a team and how to collaborate and how to have synergy. And these are things that are very essential for the world of work these days. What do the other team members have to say about Coral, Coral Coin? I feel as though Coral Coin represents the unity of our team because prior to the day of the competition, Jessica would have gotten a sensor, like a piece of equipment that would sense carbon monoxide from one of our lecturers. And we were spending many nights, well, mainly Jessica was spending many nights trying to work the sensor while I was spending nights like thinking about what financial app we could possibly use as a backup. However, both of those ideas were discarded when we would have met with the coordinator the night before because we would have been inspired then to utilize an app that could coincide and be supported by the sand dollar. So I believe that Coral Point itself as an app, though it's very innovative, it also represents the unity of our team because it was a lot of ideas we put together. Like some of us would have mentioned like the donate feature, while others would have been worried about the back end of the transactions, ensuring that you wanted to be protected and decentralized. Whereas others would have also like Macari would learn to code to ensure that the website was user friendly and had very fancy designs. While Tuwana was also working on the presentation. And we had some issues which we resolved by doing a flow chart to figure out which part of the process we had issues in. And we had some colleagues there that we were that were competing against us that also assisted us with getting certain APIs, one being Stripe API, to ensure that the transactions was functional and could have been demoed during the following day at presentations. So I believe like it just represents community, just like how Coral represents an ecosystem that inhabits a habitat. I feel as though Coral find that's the same thing. Yep, and just bounce off of what Matthew said, like, I think sometimes in our culture, it's like, we don't share our ideas with each other. We're like, oh my gosh, that's my idea. Like, I won't share that with you. But like, when we went to the competition, there were other competitors there and they're like, oh, what do you plan on making? And like, we, we were kind of hesitant to share with them. And then they were like, no problem. Like, we don't mind sharing our idea with you, not in a like, prideful way but in a very genuine way and like they were like oh my gosh I like your idea after we shared it with them and they literally would give tips and tricks as to how we can improve our technology and make it better so like even though we were competitors we were all helping each other to build our products and so yeah core coin they it went through many phases like we had different names at one point like we we came all around and we ended up on core coin um yeah, just taking different shifts, taking nap breaks um, at like three o'clock in the morning. It was like me and Matthew and then Matthew and Jessica. And then in the morning, Tawana came and she helped a lot with the stuff. So it was it was just a lot of teamwork. I think that when we went into the presentation room, we were kind of like hesitant to share a product because we didn't know how well it was going to fare in the judging room. But when we came and we displayed it, the judges were very impressed and they were very wowed um, about just how much we were able to complete in such a short amount of time. Wow. Well, I am intrigued by the story that's unfolding here on the show. But before we go further, let's pause and take our final break of the show. You're listening to University Drive. We'll be back after this. Chapter One Bookstore is proud to serve the students, faculty, and staff of the University of the Bahamas and the community at large. We are the premier choice for the purchase of university textbooks and supplies and UB logo apparel, paraphernalia, and gifts. We also carry a wide variety of school supplies, learning aids, and leisure books. Visit our coffee center for all of your printing, copying, and binding needs. Chapter One Bookstore is located on the ground floor of the Michael H. Eldon Complex on University Drive. Shop with us on Monday through Saturday. You can contact us at 397-2650 or email at chapter1 at ub.edu.bs. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Chapter One Bookstore. Chapter One, the premier choice.
welcome back to University Drive. We have as our guests, Jessica Simonette, Tawana Livingston, Matthew Williams, Makari Smith, and Dean Marlo Murphy Brennan. All of them have been involved in the win that came back to the Bahamas uh, based on the creation of a fintech app called Coral Coin um, that was entered um, in a very competitive hackathon held at Harvard University. So student champions, what message do you have as students for your other counterparts and friends and networks at UB and, and other places about being aspiring innovators who uh, were daunted by the prospect of competing, right? But ultimately won. What nuggets of advice do you have for your counterparts? Hi, Tawana. Hey, I guess I'm starting off. First things first, I would say to always do your best. No matter who you think is not looking, someone is looking. Because honestly, from this experience, I thought like I just was going to like my classes, doing what I can do, trying to hire and graduate, not really reflecting on all the opportunities at UB. But one day I was like, I wonder when UB is going to have an opportunity like this. I want to be a part of this opportunity. And lo and behold, persons are speaking my name in rooms that I haven't even been in. This um moment was very memorable and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. So this opportunity goes to show that um you can do anything, you can become anything um in the University of the Bahamas. I feel as though like they say, once you go to UB you can do anything. Because UB um it really paves the way for various opportunities, whether it be networking. This experience has made me um View different cultures in different life. I have never been to Boston, Massachusetts before. I've never met the people there. Um, it was very cool. It was very different. So I feel as though as you continue to excel in UB, you don't know where it will take you. It will take you beyond your wildest imagination. So my advice to the students is continue to do well. And don't think that no one is looking at you. Even if no one is looking at you, continue to do your best because you never know. Jessica, yeah. I also want to say to always put your best foot forward because sometimes along the journey, you can feel like it's taking too long and, you know, you're not getting the amount of wins that you want and you feel like you're working so hard for something that for a reward that's taking too long to come. But like to want to mention, you never know where your name is being mentioned. So when you're in classes and you're doing assignments, sometimes you you want to take breaks and you don't want to exactly put 100% of the effort in because it feels like, okay, it's just another assignment. It's just something else that I'm doing to get to a bigger goal later on. But you take small steps to get to that big goal. And those small steps, they mean a lot. Even, even though it may not seem that way, it means a lot. Specifically with us with this hackathon we didn't even realize that our names were being selected to be the persons that would go on this you know amazing journey it was us making sure that we take those small steps to ensure that we get the reward that we want and are satisfied with later and then what happened on the way is the work that we've put in this far was recognized and it got us to the point that we're here now and it's motivating us to continue to go on to work even harder to progress towards graduation. So, you know, like Tawana mentioned, you you never know where something could take you. It, it may seem like the journey to graduation is taking a long time and it's too rigorous, but all of it just makes you stronger. You know, and I think UB definitely teaches you to be adaptable. I want to, you know, highlight that you can't be too set in one place, have your mind made up that you're not looking at the bigger picture. And you have to be able to pivot, be able to recognize when something isn't working, look at what's working and look, and look at what's not working and realize that, okay, this is what needs to be changed. This is what needs to stay as opposed to sticking with one goal. And then you also have to be able to 
feed out some of the negativity from some of the persons who may also be tired on their journey. And, you know, they may feel a little like they're not getting the reward they want, who may try to tell you, well, it, it doesn't make sense to put your 100% effort in, you know, you have to be able to feed out that, that what they're saying and focus on what you're doing and realize that even though you're not seeing the reward right now, it's going to come. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that you should be bold and walk by faith. I think so many students during the college journey, they they hide behind the veil of fear. Like, oh, I don't know what's going to come out of this. Oh, I, I'm not good at public speaking. I've never been in that environment before. But I think that fear is something that really holds you back as a person. So like if there's anything on your mind that you've been considering doing, but you're not sure, you're kind of nervous about it, I say, go for it. You never know where that might take you. When the opportunity comes, takes it, take it. And I've seen that play out in my life. In 2023, I was kind of thinking about whether I should run for Miss University of the Bahamas or not. And I ended up doing it. And by the grace of God, I was Miss University of the Bahamas 2023, 2024. And so like you, you never know what comes out of these opportunities. I was scared to go um, on this trip to Live AI because I've never done a hackathon before. I don't know that much about coding. I was kind of hesitant because I, I have financial um, information and knowledge, but I don't have any I don't have much knowledge in the area of technology. And so I was like, how am I going to be an asset to this group? But I was able to pour into this group so much more than I thought I was able to. And all of my teammates, they were able to pour into this project abundantly. So take the opportunities that come your way and be bold and walk by faith. God will do the rest. This is Master speaking. I want to think about on something Jessica said. She mentioned, you know, being able to ignore the noise in the market, ignore the negativity. I want to piggyback on that and also add, say, I think it's very important, too, for us to find the positivity that is being said in our communities, because my group of friends, my group of close friends, my close family members, as well as this team and the dean, I believe they believed in us so much that even when doubt would have arise on the trip and during the event, you would have had in your head that there's still a possibility, because you're finding the voice of positivity there to say, you know, there's still a chance. There's still a mustard seed of it. Because sometimes I think we have to accept that it might come a time where we are unable to do it by ourselves. But if we have a support team, a system behind us that pushes us, then we are very much capable of being the beings that we are set out to be. And I think that's very important, you know, for each student to consider who their friends are, to consider who they're listening to every day, and to consider which parts they are taking with them at the end of the day. I think it's very important at the end, like, your night or day ends to reflect on what was said to you and to journal or take certain parts with you before into the next day. All very valid and, and relevant nuggets to share. All very valid and very relevant. Um, Dean Murphy Brennan, anything else you want to add on that score? I just want to say that um, on students, purpose got them into UB. Their individual purpose um, impacted the decision about what areas they would study, what disciplines they would um, pursue. Matthew and Jessica decided that they wanted to be CIS majors, computer information systems majors. Tiwana decided that economics was the route to go for the career that she's dreaming of. Makari decided that finance is the discipline that she should pursue at UB, their individual purpose. Makari said something that really resonated with me. She said she didn't know how she would she could make a difference. But in the team environment, her financial skills, the knowledge that she's gained in her program, it was relevant. And so the bigger picture meant that we had to find the talent, the discipline from three different areas to, to create the right team, the right mix. Um, but beyond that, beyond, beyond creating the team, it was their purpose. And, and all of them, I think in one way or the other have said it, you want to surround yourself by people who are positive and who will believe in you, who will speak life into you. And so once we narrowed 
the difficult process of narrowing down and selecting this team, when we met, when we met, um, we met in person, but we met also in Zoom, I wanted to say to them, you have to have the audacity to believe that you can win and compete against anyone, anywhere in the world. You are that good. You are prepared. You are ready for this moment. And so the students, I, and of course, prayer, you never leave prayer out of, out of the mix. The students, I'm so happy that they did not allow the negative voices and the negative experiences and comments to dominate. They allowed instead all of what is good and great about them as individuals and about their experiences here at UB and the Bahamas. They allowed all of that. They brought all of that to bear. And they had the audacity and the confidence to believe that they could win. And they did it. Nothing is impossible if you believe. All right. That's awesome. And guess what? We are flat out of time. And so in these uh, final, I want to say, seconds, um, I will I will open the floor to any wrap-up comments, any parting comments that you wanted to issue as we transition into our closing. Mika, as I listen to two. Matthew, Tawana, Makari, Jessica, and you. I am just, I'm I'm lost for words. I am so very proud of each and every one of them. And I hope that your listeners, if they have a dream for their life, for their career, um, that they would consider the path of of the the University of the Bahamas. Um knowing that this institution we have, you know, we have amazing students, we have amazing faculty, we have an amazing administrative team, academic affairs um, pulls all of these programs together. We have leadership that cares. UB is in the Bahamas and of the Bahamas. We, 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 we want to make a difference. We understand our role in national development, um, but national development is people development. And so we are here to help facilitate people changing their lives and living their very best life, whether that is going to be impacting within the Bahamas or globally. So I, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank Matthew, Tawana, Makari, and Jessica. I thank them for representing all of what UB tries to do every day. And, and clearly we're making progress in, 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 in impacting lives. I thank them for being just their very best self um, and showing up today to say to Bahamians, you too can do what we've done. You know, nothing is too difficult if you believe in yourself. So thank you for this opportunity. All right, students, you have, what, five seconds each. All right, I can begin. I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported us, the Central Bank, the School of Business, each other, our families, our friends, all of the HODs, the teachers and professors. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. That's the one I have. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported us this entire journey, even before and after the journey. Including my mother, my grandmother, my parents, my lecturers, Marlo, Murphy, Brennan, and my fellow colleagues. Very grateful. I want to say thank you to everyone who believed in us, even when we didn't believe in ourselves. I, we, we're very appreciative to God because we definitely could not have done this without him. And I, I want to say thank you to my dad because my dad always believes in me, even when I doubt myself. And I want to say thank you to you as well for having us on the show because this has been an amazing show and we definitely enjoyed being here. And thank you to Ian, Brennan for caring for us. We could even hear the warmth in your voice as we speak. <laughs> we really appreciate you. And we also appreciate Mr. Kevin Demerit for making this opportunity possible in conjunction with the Central Bank and Governor Rule. Matthew speaking, I want to thank everyone that supported us both during, before, and after the competition. I want to thank those who voted for us to give us the popular vote award. 
I want to thank our dean for believing in us when it might have been most difficult to go through all of those individuals and pick the top four. But I want to thank God for bringing us all together, not just through the competition, but here today to demonstrate what he has. And thank you, AV, AVP Lundy, as well, for having us. So oh. I, I know that we're flat out of time. AVP Tamika Lundy, you were amazing in pulling all of this together and for making us feel so comfortable to talk about this the, the entire journey. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Central Bank again. Thank you to Governor John Roll. Thank you to Kevin Demerit. Thank you to Scotty Shaw, um, the U.S. Um, point person for the AI Hackathon. Thank you to Academic Affairs. Thank you to the president of the university. Just thank you to all of the people who made this moment and these amazing students um, possible. We're so proud. Well, you are quite welcome. We here at University Drive are all about storytelling and sharing stories of excellence. We are UB proud. We are UB strong. Listeners, this is what greatness looks and sounds like. Join us again next time for another episode of University Drive. I've been your host, Tamika Lundy, signing off for now. University Drive is a production of the Office of University Relations at University of the Bahamas. All rights reserved.